Welcome to Backyard Planking. My name is Charles and uh, got another target idea for you today. Now, this stuff is easy enough to come by. Everybody's got it, pretty much. But after I got to thinking about it, maybe I should have done this at Thanksgiving. But the can. The lid that's on it. Now, you young folks that are out there, just be careful. These things are short when you're running through a can opener and open them up. And you don't want to clip your trigger finger and then have a little boo boo on there and all the air gun fun is out. So we're going to take some of these, and it doesn't matter if it's off the regular soup can or the convenient pull tab. Yeah. But let's start with the holder for these things. Just happen to have one. Now, <clears throat> you can make these out of wood. I'm going to choose cardboard. Well, for a couple of different reasons. First of all, you can see this one says mailbox on there. Uh, yeah, I got up the other morning. Went out to go to work. There was something laying in the yard. What is that? Get my flashlight and shine it. My mailbox. About 10 feet away from where it should be in the grass. Apparently somebody clipped it. Thank you very much, whoever you were. I didn't want to have to spend money on this thing, so I'm going to use this as a target holder. I was a little concerned when I found the mailbox laying out there because I was like, oh my God, we ain't going to get no Christmas cards. We ain't going to get this and that together. I got to get this thing fixed. I went back in the house. I told my better half what had happened, this and that and the other. She said, about this time of year, we get a lot of bills. You need to get this mailbox fixed. Now, I could see the validity to my side of the argument that we weren't going to get no Christmas cards. I am still trying to figure out how in the world it is that she can validly say, oh my God, you have to fix it so we can get bills. Anyway, so we're just going to take a cardboard box. This is going to be our, pretty much our holder for our target things. You can see the black line that's drawn on here. When I was doing this as a test run, I just had a box, and and it doesn't have to be something like this. It's just what I picked because I was aggravated. It could pretty much be anything. But I had another test subject, and I was going through and got it, and was just cutting it, and my better half comes to me, and she said, what are you doing? I explained it to her. She said, okay. She said, well, why are you just butchering the back end of it? I said, because I don't really care what the back end looks like. All I'm looking at is the front of the target holder. She said, uh-huh. I got a question, Archimedes. Said, what? Well, if you're going to cut it there, how many do you think you can get out of us? Well, well, it's one. I can probably get four of them out of here. She said, uh-huh. She said, but all you care about is how the front looks. I said, that's right. She said, where you're cutting, ain't that going to be the front of the next one? So I went and got a tape measure and a marker. And I marked off seven inches around, you know, because we're going to have to weight the bottom of this thing. The great part about it is, even if you forget about it and it stays out in the yard and falls apart, doesn't matter, you ain't lost nothing. Let me cut this thing off. You might not want to watch this at home. Alright, so we got us a nice little target holder right here. A little flimsy. That's okay, we're gonna fix that. And thanks to the brains of the outfit, nice clean cut for the next one. So, 
Now we've got our <laughs> target holder. It's okay, he'll straighten up in a second. We're going to go back and go with the actual targets themselves. The little lid things, the ones that cut off of the cans. Now, you can get your drill bit, which will be fine. Uh, in this particular case, because Believe it or not, it's a little cool in the state of Florida. I mean, it's like 64 degrees or something like that. It's cold. I don't want to go outside. But I do have a self-tapping screw that's uh, just the right size. Let's get something that we can hang on to it with and not use our trigger finger. We're going to put two holes in this thing. One on either side. And it has to be the right dimension. Uh -oh. For our old friend, the coat hanger, to go through. Yeah. I see what you're up to now here, Billy. Well, kind of. Maybe. Let's kind of flatten some of these edges out a little bit. Because that is rough on my fingers. Now what we're going to do is take these lids. And like I said, it doesn't matter if it's the ones with the little pull tabs or, or these. Where we drill the holes in the sides of them, we're going to cut into there. Now, really need like a pair of sheet metal pliers or something or sheet metal snips to get into there but my handy dandy pruning shears that I've had for a long time they can cut right into it just like nothing I'm gonna make four cuts two on either side of the holes, just like that. Then, carefully, we're gonna fold the ears in, like that. Yeah, starting to catch on now, ain't you? Let's get our coat hanger ready. Just because we're going to have to have it. You little fellas. Can all go back where you belong. And let's fold this thing out. Let's get it all squared up. Just the way we need to be, so to speak. Now don't cut this coat hanger prematurely. Kind of get you out there a little bit. There you go. But what I am going to do is I'm going to cut the rough end off. Like that. Then going to take our box, put it up here. Now, if you take the coat hanger, because it's going to penetrate the box on both sides. So if you were to cut it here, you're going to be short. You got to remember, we have to hold up the lid. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bend and a coat hanger like that down at the bottom. This will keep it from just falling through the cardboard. The next thing we need to do 
after we've done this is figure out how high we want the target. I'm guessing about here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take we're going to bend a little L shape just like that. Going to there, going to there. This part can stick all the way out because we need a way to be able to interchange the uh, interchange the targets. You want to be able to use this thing over and over and over again, right? So let's take our target, feed it down through the holes. Now it sits on the coat hanger. Hmm, imagine that. We'll find a good spot for it, poke it down, pull up the cardboard. Put the top through. Yeah, might need a little supports on the sides. You get the idea, right? Let me put some supports in this thing and if it warms up to about, I don't know, 68, 69 degrees, we'll take it outside and shoot a few BBs at it. Give me a minute. All right, so we've got our little <laughs> makeshift target set up over here with a lid in there. What I did is I just took and cut a couple of extra coat hangers and threw the box into the dirt. Now. Oh yeah, little buck. See? You have to be careful of these though because they're dangerous up to 197 yards. 191 yards. It's on the box. Neat idea. Now look, I'm just the idea guy. I'm not the engineer that builds it and sells it to somebody and then you have to go through and re-engineer the whole thing just to make it work. I'm just trying to give you an idea. So with Charles, the little buck, you know, the little BBs and stuff like that, that's fine. It seems to work pretty good. What about something a little bigger? <clears throat> like a 30 caliber. I don't know. Let's find out. Try this on the uh, little spinning doohickey. Might be a little much. Might want to stick with the BBs. Hmm. Okay, next time, my name is Charles. Let's spin back here, please.